Yo, what's going on guys? It's Shock with DG and in today's video, I'm going to be explaining the best way that you can get better at Siege. Before the video starts today, I just want to say that this list is in no particular order. Also, if you guys like the video, be sure to subscribe. I post videos like this every other day. I do daily content here on the channel. Also, like the video, it really does help me out. I would appreciate it. But going on to the first tip, the very first tip I have for you is to five stack or three stack while playing ranked. A lot of people, they think that if they have a higher rank, it means they're better at the game. Now, I'll touch on this later. It doesn't necessarily mean that you're better at the game, but if my game was down, but if what you're going for is a better rank and that's what you think it means to be better at the game you need to be three stacking or five stacking okay now the reason i say three stacking or five stacking is because as long as you're three stacked every single time you and your two other friends can either vote a certain operator a certain map a certain bomb site uh anything like that and you can also take the three most important operators you need for the defense or attack so it's very important that you're at least three stacking but i'd recommend five stacking to rank up it is very very important it's going to be so much more difficult to rank up if you don't have a five stack and if you don't have a three stack next up is to find a good sensitivity and dpi now you guys know i'm not a big fan of high dpis and if you play them it's fine um I would recommend though you stick to 400 or 800 DPI. I really do not suggest going outside of that. I don't think playing higher than 800 is going to be beneficial for you. I understand there are great players that play above 800, but they are the exceptions and you do not want to try to be the exception in anything. It is already really difficult to be very good at this game. You don't want to make it harder for yourself by trying to be the exception. So I would recommend try out 400 and 800 DPI depending on your mouse space and you know all of that. Figure out what's best for you and then go from there. As for your in-game sensitivity, um, I have a video on this. I'll have it linked in the description. I actually go over how to find your DPI as well. Uh, and if you don't know how to find your DPI, you don't know what it is, I go over in that video exactly what it is and how to find it along with your sensitivity. So again, that'll be linked in the description if you want to watch it, along with my other tips playlist. Um, it's got a whole bunch of tips content in there. Again, I post videos like this every other day. So if you guys have any anything else you want to see, aim training guide, movement guide, all that, it's all in that playlist. Anyways. Next up is crosshair placement. Crosshair placement is very, very important, especially for getting better aim and movement and just playing better in general. If you have better crosshair placement, you're going to play better. If you go against someone, okay, and they're aiming at your chest and you're aiming at their head, this is a one-shot headshot game. If you shoot first, it doesn't even matter if you shoot first, actually. They could shoot first. You could shoot second. You're still going to win that because you are aiming at the head they're aiming at the chest it's an insta kill for the headshot not for the chest okay so you're automatically going to win that gunfight that is setting you up for success every single time the only time you're going to not be on their head is if they're crouched or prone but you have to play it by the situation if you hear them crouch aim crouch if you hear them prone aim prone if you if you're not sure maybe aim in the middle so you have to make like a small adjustment to where you think it's going to be but for the most part you want to practice good cross replacement uh, again, I, I have a video on this um, on the DG channel. You can go to Disrupt Gaming channel and watch that. I have one in my tips playlist. I, I go over this a lot, so I won't touch on it too much. Um, but yeah, having a really good crosshair placement is going to help you out a lot. Next up is play lots of T Hunt. Again, the way you're going to practice your sense and your DPI and your crosshair placement and your aim and movement and all that is in T Hunt. Personally, if you guys have been watching my channel or watching my Twitch streams, you you know that I do not like third-party aim trainers. If they work for you, they work for you. Uh, more power to you. Personally, I recommend, if you don't use them already, don't. Um, I would recommend watching some tip videos on aim and movement and all that and practice for like a month. If you're not seeing results, then maybe go to an aim trainer. Uh, but personally, I do not like them. I do not use third-party aim trainers. I do all of my aim training in Siege. So I would recommend just play lots of T-Hunt. Practice what you want to practice. If, if your goal that day is cross replacement, do cross replacement. If it's movement, practice your movement. You know, things like that. Uh, I, I personally think doing it all in T on in Siege is the best way to do it. So, for number five, I have KD does not matter, including your individual stats. None of your individual stats matter. None of them at all. Siege is a team game. You win and lose as a team. You don't win and lose as an individual. This is not COD. Okay, despite what anyone will tell you, this is not COD. I, I've played this game at a really high competitive level. I, a lot of my former teammates are in Pro League now. Iconic, um, Lags, J90, okay? A lot of these guys, Foltz, Merc, these guys are in Pro League. I've had a lot of people try to tell me that 
No, it is an individual game. If I get enough kills, you win. Maybe, sometimes, but you cannot rely on individual skill 100% of the time. You you should be playing as a team with your team. You getting an extra frag one round may win you that round sometimes, but oftentimes it's not going to win you the game. And it's not always going to win you that round. It is a team game. You need to learn to play as a team and play with your team. If you're a solo player, that's fine. But you need to learn to contribute to your team still. I promise you playing solo, baiting your teammates, last alive is not going to help you. So speaking of being last alive and baiting, for number six, I have people are playing way too passive on def or attack. Sorry, way too passive on attack. All solo queue and plat two elo, plat one elo. And I see people... With a minute and a half into the round, two minutes into the round, outside holding an angle. Listen, when you're on attack, you have that three minutes to leave spawn, drone where you need the drone, roam clear, set up your execute, and execute to plant that bomb. At the end of the day, at the end of the round, your objective is to plant the bomb, okay? That bomb needs to go down. That is your primary objective, not to kill everybody, not to get as many kills as you can to plant the bomb and win the round. So you're really putting yourself at a, a very high disadvantage by sitting outside and holding angles sure you might get two three four kills did you win the round though probably not because you left your team all alone trying to execute on the bomb site they they needed you to help them you need to get ground control you need map control but you're not getting that like holding angles outside i see way too many people doing this and for defense people do the opposite i don't know what it is you think it you think it'd be the opposite people play aggressive on attack and passive on defense it's not it's really the opposite people play so aggro on defense sometimes i really don't get it i'll see this guy hold an angle for two and a half minutes outside on attack and then he'll die in the first five seconds on defense pawns killing it is mind-blowing to me it really is but i, I you know you think this is a really basic thing but people really don't do this so keep in mind you you need to be really aggressive on attack to an extent make sure you you know you're playing aggressive with intel drone but you know all that but play passive on defense, aggressive on attack. On defense, the clock is on your side. If the attackers are playing passive, good. that's really good for you. That means you have that time going down. And if that time hits zero, you win, as long as they're not planting. If that time hits zero on, and you're on attack and you're outside the building, you're not planting or anything, you lost the round. So just keep that in mind. So for number seven, I have you need a goal in mind. Having goals is great for just anything, really. But if you are trying to improve at certain things, having mini goals is great. When you get on today, what is the main thing you want to improve at today? Do you want to get better aim? Do you want to get better movement, better crosser placement? Do you want to get a higher rank? What do you want to do? You need to have a goal and you need to work towards that goal for the day. It's very, very important that you do this. It's, it's, it's honestly something that I did to help myself improve at many aspects when I was trying to get better at the game is I would say, okay, I want to get better crosshair placement today. I'm going to spend an hour in TN practicing my crosshair placement, or I want to get better flicks. So I practice my flicks or anything like that. You just have to have a certain goal in mind, or, or maybe it's, maybe it's something outside of TN you're playing ranked. Okay. I play way too, I play way too aggressive on defense i want to play more passive on defense okay play more passive on defense make a mental note in your head when you're on defense hey i'm going to play more passive today because i've been too aggressive so like that that i promise you is going to make such a big difference in your gameplay next up is use your utility far too many people have you know there's maybe your ash on attack right in this current meta, Ash actually has a lot of utility to burn ADSs and Wamais because it's the utility meta right now. It's the Wamai Jaeger uh, meta right now. You need you need to help your team by throwing those flash grenades. Too many people don't use their utility. If you're on defense, people don't place their barbed wire. They don't place all their mute jammers, their ADSs, their reinforcements. I know there's a reinforcement pool now. That doesn't mean you don't reinforce. You got to help your team out. You got to reinforce. As I said earlier, is a team game and. These operators have gadgets and utility for a reason. They have secondary gadgets. They have primary gadgets. This is the gadget meta. This meta, you win or lose by who's using the gadgets better. So make sure you're using your utility properly. It's so, so important. Next up is find your role. What are you good at? Are you really good at aiming? Are your flicks crazy? You know, can you entry with Ash better than anyone else you're playing with? Maybe you should be on Ash. Maybe you should be on Sledge, that entry role, or Zofia, whatever it may be. Are you not so good at aiming? Are you not so good at winning your gunfights? Are you a smarter player? Are you a little bit slower? Maybe you should be the droner, the thermite player, the support player. You have to find what your role is. Trying to force a fragger role in an entry role when you're a support player is not going to end well for you. There's a reason pro teams have certain roles. People have to fill those roles. People are people are good at certain roles. You know, you don't see Bolo on thermite 
because Bolo is a really good player mechanically. Of course, all the other Pro League players are, but Bolo is exceptional at aiming, and he's really good at getting those entry frags. So he's on Ash, he's on Zofia, Sledge, that entry role, that entry operator. Now, if you're not that entry player, you don't want to be on entry. You want you want to be on that support role. You don't want to force a role you're not good at. It's not going to work out. Now, that doesn't mean you should try you you shouldn't try experimenting with other roles because you definitely should. You know, what separates a good player from a great player in this game is someone who's able to play multiple roles. Flex players are great. If you can play multiple roles very, very well, you're going to be much more valuable to teams or just in ranked or whatever. If you can play multiple operators in multiple roles, your value as a player goes up significantly. So keep that in mind. Just don't try to force your role. Definitely practice other roles, but don't force it. You know what I mean? Just practice a little bit with it. You don't got to force anything, but that's going to be all for this video. Uh, as I said at the beginning of the video, I would really appreciate if you guys would sub. I make daily content. Uh, once a day is gameplay content, and then, you know, the other day is tips content like this, so I'd really appreciate it if you would subscribe, like the video. It does help me out a lot. At 100k subs, I'm going to be dropping my first ever set of merch, so if you guys are looking forward to that, again, be sure to subscribe. Also, I have all my social medias listed on the pinned comment as well as the description. I have an entire tips playlist of videos just like this one, so if you guys are interested in other things such as that, be sure to check that out in the description. But as always, guys, thanks for watching. I hope you have a good day.